look, the way this works is we're going to tell you it's totally hopeless to compete with us on training foundation models you shouldn't try, and it's your job to, like, try anyway. And I believe both of those things. I, I, think, it, I think it is pretty hopeless. In contrast to Sam's statement, it seems like DeepSeek has actually caught up to OpenAI. So here's a tweet from Mark Chen, who is the chief research officer of OpenAI. He said, congrats to DeepSeek on producing an O1 level reasoning model. Their re research paper demonstrates that they have independently found some of the core ideas that we did on our way to O1. So two things, OpenAI is publicly acknowledging that uh, DeepSeek R1 is an O1 level reasoning model. And the second is that the training techniques are very similar to what O1 is using. However, in the process, it seems like Mark is also trying to take a credit for the techniques that DeepSeek is using. As pointed out by Sam, who has an excellent YouTube channel, and you should definitely follow him. Here he says that I don't think you get to claim credit for someone else's paper by saying, if we had published, we would have shown we did it first. And I totally agree with Sam on this. And I also agree with Dalip who said, closed source work makes it impossible to trust these claims and also the, training, the claims of data safety as well. As far as science is concerned, the attribution of techniques in R1 should be solely to DeepSeek authors unless OpenAI open up their code base with verifiable commit history. And even in that case, I think it still makes sense to give all the credit to DeepSeek1 authors because they are the one who actually published the work. Mark goes on to stay, say that, however, I think the um, external response has been somewhat overblown, especially in narratives around cost. And I'll show you a couple of potential conspiracy theories around this. One implication of having two paradigms, pre-training and reasoning, is that we can optimize for capability or two access instead of one, which leads to lower costs. So Bill Ackman, who is a billionaire, he tweeted this today. What are the chances that DeepSeek's hedge fund affiliate made a fortune yesterday with short-dated puts on NVIDIA and power companies? A fortune it could have been made. Which, If the sell-off in NVIDIA was pre-planned and it was triggered by the hedge fund behind DeepSeek, which I don't think is the case. And here's a very simple take from Jeremy Howard on that, who is an excellent educator, the co-founder of Answer.ai and Fast.ai. And I think there's a whole generation of deep learning researchers and practitioners who got their training through the fast.ai course. So he says, you all do understand, I hope, that the reason for the uh, NVIDIA collapse is that the U.S. announced massive tariffs on imported chips, which would destroy NVIDIA's business entirely if implemented. You can't actually blame Chinese for that, you know. And yeah, that, that, this makes absolute sense. I don't think this whole um, NVIDIA sell-off was triggered by uh, the release of R1 because as somebody pointed out here, not sure, but no one has ever answered me why the market markets took five days to react after R1 came out. It came out on Thursday last week. So if you're not following the news, NVIDIA had almost 17% loss in their market cap. But today, they recovered almost 9% of that. And it seems like this whole thing was triggered by Trump's calls for tariff on computer chips, semiconductors, and pharmaceuticals from Taiwan. Especially, I think there's a proposal to put a tariff of from 25 to all the way 100% on chips created by TSMC in Taiwan, which I think easily explains this sell-off because that is going to have a huge impact on NVIDIA's business. Now, there is another uh, take from Palmer Lucky, who said, DeepSeek is legitimately impressive, but the level of hysteria is an indictment of so many. The $5 million number is bogus. I don't agree with this because you can easily figure out how they came up with a $5 million number. I'll show you how. And it is pushed by Chinese hedge fund to slow investments in uh, American AI startups service their own shorts against American titans like NVIDIA and hide sanction invasion. Now, so very similar in sentiment to that of Bill Ackman. But to be honest, DeepSeek is not the only Chinese company. Ch Chinese are actually taking a lead when it comes to open source. Now, in terms of the $5 cost number, they have been very transparent about the type of GPUs that they used, what were the GPU hours uh, that were used for training. Now, in the paper, 
they say that assuming uh, the rental price of uh, the H800 GPU, which is about $2 per GPU hour, our total training costs amount to 5.756 million. But people ignore this part. Note that the aforementioned costs include only the official training of DeepSeq V3, excluding the costs associated with uh, prior research and ablation experiments on architecture algorithms and data. So they are very clear that they are talking about that one single run uh, for the final training of DeepSeq. It's not about the architecture experimentation that they did or different algorithms that they tried or even the salaries of the uh, people involved. So based on this and what other people have previous, previously reported, these are plausible numbers. But again, these are for the single training run. The overall cost is definitely much, much higher. Now, the performance of DeepSeek seems to be a surprise for all of us, but DeepSeek has been telling us for a while now. So as uh, Jeremy pointed out, how uh, could anyone uh, have seen R1 coming? Just because DeepSeek showed DeepSeek R1 Lite preview months ago, showed the scaling graph and said they were going to release an API and open source. How could anyone have guessed, right? And he's pointing to this tweet from the DeepSeq t uh, team who actually showed the infant scaling laws of DeepSeq R1 like preview. This was announced or at least mentioned in the original DeepSeq V3 paper. And some of the training data for the V3 model was actually coming from R1, which is pretty interesting. So here they show a steady score improvements on reasoning task one of these benchmarks is ai me as thought length increases and you can see that as you increase the number of tokens that are generated at inference time using the test time compute the accuracy of the system actually increases now although uh, deep seek is uh, getting all the limelight right now there are some other amazing chinese companies who are really pushing open source and uh, one of them is the um, Quint division of Alibaba, they, uh, they released uh, Quint 2.5 Max, which is better than Deep Secret 3 on a number of very important benchmarks. So here they say the burst of Deep Secret 3 has attracted attention from the whole AI community to large scale MOE models. Concurrently, we have been building uh, Quint 2.5 Max, a large MOE LLM pre trained on massive data and uh, post-trained with curated supervised fine-tuning and RLHF recipes. It achieves competitive performance against the top-tier models and out-competes DeepSeq V3 in benchmarks like Hard, uh, Arena Hard, uh, Live Bench, Live Code Bench, and GPQA Diamond. And this model is currently available on their platform. You can use this for absolutely free. There's another model, UI, which is a really good open source alternative to something like Sono. So this is a text to music generation model, which is on par with the Sono models. And again, this is open source. You can render on your local machine without need of using external API services or any closed source models. Now, for some reason with the R1 release, people are trying to make it US companies versus Chinese companies. But I think it's more about uh, closed source versus open source. And at the moment, China or Chinese companies are taking a lead in the open source releases. If you think about the last model, and currently Chinese companies are the ones who are actually leading the open source releases of these models. Meta, who actually really started this whole open weight large language model movement, released their last model last year. So it's been a while. And another major company was Mistral, who I don't even remember when was the last time they released an open weight model. But with Chinese companies, you are seeing new model releases or updates almost on a weekly or even on daily basis, which is pretty incredible. And this means if you are determined enough, you can run even a model like R1 completely locally on your own setup although you will need about $6,000 of hardware uh, if you're not going to use uh, a GPU, but this is going to give you probably uh, up to five tokens per second. So Matthew Karnick 
put a whole list of all the hardware that you will need in order to be able to run a model that's going to fit that a 700 plus billion parameters model. Okay, I'm going to close out this video with a tweet from the Zen Wang. So let's uh, be clear, Deep Sea Guy 1 isn't about who races faster. It's about the inherent flaw in the closed models. The future of AI is not owned by those who hide code or stockpile chips. It's built on trust and trust requires transparency. When models are black boxes, you surrender control over your data privacy, culturally align ethics, and post-training customization for real-world scenarios. That's not leadership, it's liability. China's pre-training consolidation proves a simple truth. AI is becoming commodity. It's not about models anymore. The real value lies not in the model, but in what you do with it. Why waste billions reinventing closed source base models when the market craves applications that solve poverty, climate right crisis, and healthcare gaps? And healthcare gaps, labs clinging to secrecy risk irrelevance, like doubling down on a fax machine as email took over. Consider the irony. Today, the free models come from quant firms while non-profits charge pre premiums for access. Nobody has $200 to pay per month to get access to a reasoning model or to have a very limited number of access to something like O1 while something like DeepSeek is actually providing this for absolutely free. OpenAI's pivot from open to walled garden betrayed the very ethos that birthed modern AI. Meanwhile, market economy principles prevail. Restrict access and replacements emerge. The lesson, trust beats control. Open models engage developers. Closed models breach suspicion. And suspicion fuels replacement. How to maintain leads? Stop gatekeeping. With open infrastructure, the world trusts like the internet. History doesn't reward clinging to scarcity. It rewards those who empower the many. The choice is yours. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.